ladies, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Please be advised that this movie has no nudity. I'm out. Come on, Annie. Let's go to the movies. Yeah. I just have to wee wee. And we're back. Just like the five musketeers. What the hell am I looking at? A country where culture means pornography and slasher films. If you had these boobs, you'd be obsessed with them too. Very exciting, big event. Everybody's excited, huh? We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We're Cinnamon this podcast. Tom Tom is by far the most talented actor who's not named Robert De Niro or Al Pacino. Uh, sincerely, he is uh, fantastic. Sometimes he goes, hey, Chris, I want to do a movie with you. And I go, Tom Tom, you got it, babe. You sound less like Christopher Walken <laughs> and more like a deaf guy that was just able to start talking. <laughs> Now you're listening to the Deaf Guy That Just Learned How to Talk podcast. Welcome. All right. So on that charming note, guys. 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 We're not doing that thing anymore. Oh. Hey. Oh. So welcome no, to not. Cinema Madness, the podcast. Hey. You... Why? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Scream. Anyways, but uh, no, welcome to Cinema Madness, the podcast. Uh Thank you very much for stopping by and hanging out with us. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually focusing on Tom Cruise. You see, he's going to be releasing... Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. I I'm going to get into that in a second. Just This is my story. Let me introduce him. Welcome very much. Anyway, so Tom Cruise is whom we're going to be discussing today, but... Um, before that, I want to welcome you to Sin as the podcast. Here we go. Exactly. You know what? If you have four drinks, you might as well have six. Uh, that makes ten, and ten's a perfect they score. Anyway, so um, my name is Roman, of course, and I'm joined by my outstanding ball busting crew. I have to my right. If you're looking at this, is to your nothing because you can't see us. I have the beautiful, wonderful Enchantress, uh, uh, Allison. Enchantress? Ooh. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and then Adam. Hey, how is it going? Yeah, that's me. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So we're going to be talking about Tom Cruise. So when I mentioned the name Tom Cruise in movies, before we get all psyched and talk about Maverick uh, coming out, I believe in June. Wrong. No? No. May. May. Okay. 2022, if yeah. you're listening in a, in a different year <laughs> yeah. and time. Yes. Or maybe May 2023, the way it's going. Pretty yeah. much. I man. really wanted to get pushed back just one more time. <laughs> <laughs> just go straight, that, to, if, straight to VOD. If that happens, straight to HBO. <laughs> if that happens, Tom Cruise is going to lose his couch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, is that jokes are being? Yeah, do? no, 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 no. We're, we're no, just no, going to stop no. right there. No, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. But no. Uh, oh, when I mentioned Tom Cruise, uh, let's go around the room and talk about it. So, Allison, go ahead. First impressions, thoughts on Tom Cruise? Like just in general, like now or? Well, in general, and then we're going to be focusing on the 80s Tom Cruise, which oh, okay. this will I be mean, a three-part. Okay, so you, you say Tom Cruise, the first mm -hmm. thing you think of is major movie star, right? Okay. Major movie star who's been with us in his craft for decades. Mm -hmm. um, and he's still, I also think, youthful. Mm -hmm. The man doesn't age, and he has aged a little bit, obviously, and he's still super hot and sexy. Okay. And um, I mean, those are the two main things you think of is longevity. He's been with us for a long time. Major, major movie star. Um, and then I guess you can kind of bring up some of his personal life stuff. OK, excellent. Adam, same question. Running. Lots and lots, lots of, of running. running. No, uh, he's 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 actually an, uh, an actor who I really enjoy his body of work. Um, mm -hmm. Not big fan of him personally, but, you know, I can separate the art from the artist and He's a, you know, he's he's always impressive in everything he does. Even his even his shitty movies are are good. He gives good performances, so I like him. Okay, I like him. Yeah. Well, we're going to dive into who Tom Cruise is, and this will be a three parter, I believe. We're going to shoot four. We're going to uh, discuss it in parts. We're going to talk about the eighties. Uh, Tom Cruise when he first uh, jumped onto the scene. Who was he before? 
and uh, what he brought to the table in the 80s and 90s. And, of course, we'll, we'll just combine the 20s and the teens and the 2020s to uh, just talking about the decade, if you will, of... Uh, Tom Cruise the 20- in the 21st century. Yes. In the 21st century, there was Tom Cruise and cockroaches. That's all there was. No, um, we're going to be talking about that and really excited about it. So let's go ahead and start talking about Tom Cruise, the man, the myth, the legend. Tom Cruise. So on July 3rd of 1962, Thomas Cruise, I always mess up on his actual name, May May Pother. May, May Pother. Wait a minute. Yes, the fourth. Cruz is his middle name? Yes. I did not know that. There you go. Look at me learning. Boom. Well, I would change my name too. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, and you're taking away from my, my, my mojo, but no, it's funny because he he went into a talent agent um, and uh, his agent, and he introduced himself as Thomas uh, May, May, May Pother. Uh, Thomas May Pother, uh, the fourth. When he introduced, when he left, he was Tom Cruise. So that was uh, a good agent. Yeah, fantastic agent. Actually, got him uh, onto the uh, set for Endless Love. So, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But um, so Tom Cruise or Thomas um, uh, Cruise Mayor the Fourth, uh, he actually grew up with a family. He was born in Syracuse, New York, in July third. He wasn't born on the 4th of July. Ha. 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 Yep. That movie lied to us. Exactly. <laughs> he was born July 3rd. Thank you very much. Uh, he was Thank born you very ju- much. Exactly. Um, so he was born on July 3rd of 1962. He was born to a father, of course, uh, Thomas Cruz M- the III. Uh, and his mother, whose name I believe is Marianne, pardon me, I forgot her name. But um, it was hyphenated. I think it's Marianne. But Mary anyway. Lee. Mary Lee, thank you very much. Nobody doesn't like Mary, Mary Lee. Lee. Pfeiffer. It says Pfeiffer after that. Yes. So Mary no Lee. No relation to so Michelle. Is it the, still Pfeiffer? So Pfeiffer and Maypother. <laughs> exactly. This is just <laughs> going to really get me all twisted and tied. Thank you very of, much, guys. A lot of consonants in this oh, family. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> oh, yes. But uh, yeah, he actually has a very interesting background. So he was born in Syracuse, New York. Um, he eventually was a part of a family of three sisters. Uh, his family divorced when he was at the ripe old age of 12. His father was an electrician. His mom was an amateur actress as well as a, um, teacher. Uh, so a special education teacher. And he really was trying to find himself at a young age. And as he grew older, and a little bit more comfortable with his skin. He tried to find himself because, unfortunately, he moved around a lot. Um, he moved around a lot. He went to 15 schools, he said, in one interview. So if you guys look it up. And when he, to try to get into uh, the swing of things, um, oh, so he moved from Syracuse, New York, to Louisville, Kentucky, and eventually to Jersey. Um, so... Just to show you where he was going in the world, from upstate New York to Midwest to back to Jersey. Um, but he tried to find himself. So at one point, he wanted to be a professional wrestler. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Now, that I could see that. I, I could see that. He he has to, He's like the, three feet tall. Mm-hmm. He's five foot seven with heels. No, I'm kidding. Um, stilettos. Uh, so anyways... No, he wanted to be a professional wrestler, but um, he got injured a lot. Uh, and uh, <laughs> That's uh, funny. So, so at the age of 14, he decided to think about going becoming a priest. And he started to uh, go to uh, the school, which names uh, the... Seminary? Thank you. I really didn't want to say that because I, I didn't want to have some great clip for the material. But he wanted to be a priest, mm-hmm. and that was uh, actually a fantastic information i was shocked by that um but uh that clearly didn't work out he was trying to find himself and he ended up getting casted into um a local high school presentation of guys and dolls what was Hmm. this that really lit his candle if you will 
for the acting industry. And then from there, he was focused. Now, he was focused on becoming an actor. He then jumped right to it for the summers, and he went to New York to try to become an actor. Um, and he went to basic stuff, like different uh, callings uh, for co- commercials, so on and so forth. Now, before then, he pulled a lot of jobs to help with ends meets because when the father and mother divorced, it was Tom Cruise who was the man of the house, essentially. Not to bring up that old uh, uh, phrase, but it's how it was. So Tom Cruise was the... So that kind of shows you a little bit of that drive that you kind of see now. He was pulling multiple jobs. You name it, he did. Mm-hmm. Um, working with his hands. He was a janitor at one point. He was a busboy. Uh, doing a lot of fun stuff. So he eventually uh, got his uh, big break. He went to different um, tryouts and just nothing was working. Eventually, he got on to the movie of Endless Love. Now, before... Before we go into his filmography and go down the list and talk about it and uh, talk about some other stuff and then open up with some trivia and some taglines from his films um, in the 80s, let's just take a pause real quick. So Tom Cruise in the 80s. So we talked about his impact when now, like his whole entirety of his work. When you think Tom Cruise from the 80s, is that different than Tom Cruise now? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's expand on that a little bit. What sets up, and I'm going to go the reverse on this one. I'm going to go Adam, then Allison. Uh, what sets what sets Tom Cruise apart from Tom Cruise from the 80s? Like, what do you think? Well, Tom Cruise in the 80s, his characters at least, were the, were the super cocky, super happy uh, I can accomplish anything type characters. You know, you got risky business. You've got. We're top, not talking about Michael gun. J. Fox today, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Tom Cruise of the new millennium. He is not serious, but he's more intense of of an actor mm-hmm. now, uh, doing his own stunts and um, just being more more intense of an actor. And then you you see you see the change go from from the eighties to the nineties. You see mm-hmm. him be like this light character. And then you go into the nineties where he's you know born on the fourth of July and and far and away I mean. and and uh, all that stuff. And then then you, then he gets into Mission Impossible and starts mm-hmm. becoming he becomes like the action star. And now he's this serious has to do all of his stunts the right way type actor. So, yeah, it's a it's a vast change from the 80s to today. Okay, Allison, same question. Yeah, I mean, he he was trying to make a name for himself, right? And he was mm-hmm. young. I don't know how old he was in Endless Love, but... We're 17. Talking. Okay. So, you know, all these early 80s movies, he was young, and he had his charismatic smile and his good looks, so he was probably trying to get all the, you know, roles where he would be that, you know sex symbol and all the guys would want to you know go to his movies and be him and stuff like that and that's a total change now i mean he was just trying to establish himself Mm -hmm. but kind of be like adam said kind of funny kind of silly taking those like you know likable roles not like goofy silly like Mm -hmm. an adam sandler or something like that he was still trying to be serious but trying to have those fun um fun roles that would attract both the male and female Confidence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do before we talk about his filmography, I would like to talk to you guys about uh, basically when we're talking Cruise in the 80s, what are your personal favorite films? And I'm going to partake in this one as well. Uh, What's your top three Tom Cruise films of the 80s? And what are your least favorite films? Um, of course, and uh, then I think I'm going to twist it on its head and talk about uh, something else. But let's let's get out our list, shall we? This time, um, why don't we? Go? We don't we don't have an intro for that. No, I I just made it. Just huh. clip it. There you go. So, Allison, yes, top three, uh, top three cruise. Okay, films. so and I know you're going to go over his movies. As I was looking through mm-hmm. a lot of his movies, I thought I had seen more than I had. Mm-hmm. Maybe I have seen a lot of them, and maybe I just blocked them out because 
I don't remember a lot of them. So, but that's okay. We'll go over that. But okay, I was able to have my favorite okay. in the 80s, of course. <laughs> in no particular order, we have Rain Man. Okay. We have Top Gun. Mm-hmm. And of course, this is my number one. So I guess this is in an order. <laughs> it would be Cocktail. They made a movie out of that? Out of what? Cocktail? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Huh. What? What? Anyways, Adam, Cocktail? same question. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go f- do my, my top first because my number three is uh, is something I need to talk about a little. My number one mm-hmm. uh, of the 80s, uh, also with Allison, is Cocktail. Um, my number two would be... I thought it was going to be a risky business, but I tried to watch it the other day, and it does not hold up very well. <laughs> no. um, so I'll have to go to I'll have to go Top Gun with that. But my number three is a movie a movie he did. It was like probably his second or third role. It's called Losing It. Uh, it was a sex comedy that he did, uh, yeah. but that movie came out in the year nineteen eighty two. Oh my God! All right, uh, 1982. The movie is is currently crowdfunding right now, and uh, it is a it is kind of a dream project that I want to do, and uh, we'll talk about it later. But uh, I just wanted to sh- shout do a little shout out that he did make a movie in 1982 that will be covered in 1982. You, the movie. You realize I had a factoid to feed you right in there. <laughs> I I had this whole build up. It was awesome. And there, this is why there. we should have meetings. We do. There's notes <laughs> beforehand. We are professional. But anyways, uh, so that brings me to my top three personal. Um, number three, Rain Man. Number three, Rain Man. Definitely Judge Walker. I like how you had to say that twice. Number three, number three Rain, Rain Man. Man. Yeah, Rain Man. Yep. Yeah, Rain Man. Yep, yep. Definitely Rain Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, de- de- definitely Rain Man. Uh, number two, Top Gun. Not number two, Top Gun. Everyone's number two is Top mm-hmm. Gun. Of course. Be my wingman anytime. Uh, number one is Born on the 4th of, of July. Ugh. Born on the 4th of July. So that's our top three. So why don't we go ahead and talk about our bottom three. Now, I'll start off. We'll go in reverse order. I'll I'll be very easy. Uh, in terms of the 80s, I don't have any least favorites. Like, uh, you know, I'm probably lukewarm on some of these where it's, I've seen some once, maybe twice. Uh, but it's not like, oh man, geez, I absolutely no. You can have least favorites without hating the yeah, movie. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, no, I, pick I, something. I, okay, uh, <laughs> it's a. I mean, you just agreed. Risky business doesn't hold up. So yeah, I, okay, fine. Risky business. There, there you go. go. Congratulations. You got it, Amy. I hope you're happy. Adam, <laughs> that's your that's your three. Is risky business? Yes, risky business. Yeah. It's a three way tie. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> three by three of them. Uh, risky business is my number Mm -hmm. three least favorite. Uh, Number two would be Born on the Fourth of July, just because I just don't like those types of movies. They just do not speak to me. And number one, it really pains me to say this, because I am a huge, huge fan of the director, and that is Legend. My turn. (laughs) Oh, leading us into a conversation, and way to go. Take it. You get it. I only have two, because Mm -hmm. I realized there was a couple of them that I had never seen before. Okay. Um, I don't remember this movie much but I, that means i probably didn't enjoy it I, the color of money oh the sequel okay. um, yeah. and legend that movie is not a good movie um i it's mean it's the studio's it's, fault it's this but... fantasy movie but i did not i don't get it at all um <laughs> I, I don't get it i didn't get it at all and i almost put and, and i didn't feel like it was it was fair of the movie I almost put The Outsiders just because I think I was forced to watch that once because of such a stellar cast. Yeah. And I don't know if I actually liked it or not. And I don't really, I guess I could go back and watch it mm-hmm. again, but that movie has such a big following and people love The Outsiders. Is it because it was a good, this is just a rhetorical question. Is it because it was a good movie or is it because of the cast? Well, well it was because it was a good book too. It was, it was a phenomenal book. I, I was forced to read that in sixth grade, I think. Like by gunpoint? Yeah, pretty much. No, as in, <laughs> if you don't read it. I was forced it, to read it. I was forced to read it because if you don't read it, you don't get a grade, and yes. grades are, are good. 
Um, <laughs> grades are good. <laughs> Of course. Great. So, what Make you learn before we uh, uh, dive into uh, the filmography and, and deep dive into some of these films more? Um, I would like to have a little bit of fun. What films in the eighties do you feel that Sean, Tom Cruise should have been in? Sean Cruise. Sean Cruise. Oh, um, what I mean, films do should Sean Cruise? Eighties. Yes. Oh, the only one that I thought of, I thought more of for the 90s, but the only one I mm-hmm. thought of is, I thought Tom Cruise could have been good in Footloose. I agree. Well. And I don't even like that damn movie. It, it's funny you bring that up because he was actually casted for Footloose. Was he? Yeah, we'll get more into that a little bit later. Look at that. Yeah. We're just breaking his episode. Pretty <laughs> much. Like, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm like, I really tried hard on this one. Could people. you see him... Mm-hmm. Being in a um, um, oh shoot, a um, a John Hughes movie. Could you see him being Ferris Bueller? Well, it's funny you bring that up because my no, no, this is my list in terms of the films that I wish he should have been. No, just hang in there with me, okay? So number three, Scarface. I would have actually and Al Pacino. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, his intensity would have been fantastic. Are you just being funny? I can see that, though. I can. Okay. Yes, but no. Right, yeah. Yes, yeah. See yes that. but no. Uh, because the more I research yes, his man. No. Yes, but it, no. <laughs> yes, but no. No, in terms of the more I research his man, the more I respect his, his intensity. So uh-huh. I think that he actually would have been interesting to see as Scarface, Al Pacino, or even just a member of the cast would have been interesting. Um, number two, no, this is borderline funny, um, because originally I had Soul Man, but then I Ooh. thought, thought against it. Uh, Caveman, 1981's Caveman with Ringo Starr. Oh, with Star. Ringo Starr, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dennis Quaid was in that yes, one. Yes, he was. Way. Yeah, yeah, it, because in that film, no one really says anything. It's all physical work. Yeah, which, it's all grunts. And- yeah, he actually would have been funny. And actually, I have a conspiracy theory that will get along probably in the uh, two. 21st uh, century. Ooh. Yeah. Conspiracy theory. Well, you know, I'll just spoil it because, you know, this episode's... We'll out probably there. bring it up before you do. Probably. More than likely. No. I feel that in uh, Night Museum 3, uh, where they go to um, UK, mm-hmm. Ben Stiller plays a caveman. I don't think that's Ben Stiller. I think that is Tom Cruise. I keep on looking at him like, no, that's Tom Cruise. My wife keeps on saying, look at IMDb. Of course, he's not there. It, it's a dead ringer. Yes, I know that uh, Ben Stiller does a great, great impression of Tom Cruise. I haven't seen that one in a while. Because every time I try and look it up to watch, it's not available on streaming. Mm-hmm. But so Ben Stiller plays his normal yeah, he museum plays- guy and he plays a caveman? Yep. Or in your case, you just think it's a cameo by Tom Cruise. I think it's a cameo. They are friends. Oh, interesting. I'm mm. just saying. So that kind of in- inspired me to think that, you know what? He would have been good in Caveman. And number one, you mentioned John Hughes. 16 Candles. I would have liked to have seen him. Hell no. He is not Jake Ryan. <laughs> I, no, he could have been. He absolutely yeah, could have been. And what are you doing now, Michael Shoffling? <laughs> <laughs> So, Not making Mission Impossible 8, I'll tell you that. Uh, he's probably serving you coffee. No, I'm kidding. Michael Shoffling, you're more than welcome to come on the show. We're, we're, <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about your one movie credit. <laughs> and how many chin-ups can you really do? <laughs> oh, boy. So with that being said, we're talking about Michael Shoffling's filmography. Let's go ahead and talk about his filmography. So what I want to do Who's? is... Who's? Michael Shoffling. Naturally. No, Tom Cruise. I was going to say, he legit only has one, I think. (laughs) Seriously? Yeah. Uh, That's one more than I have, so high five. Uh, So he's like, he was like a, he was like a dime store Matt Dillon. He's like, yeah. Which Matt Dillon was in Tex in 1982, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Was in who? Tex. The movie Tex. From the year 1982. Was he in Outsiders too? Yes. Matt Dillon, yes. Ah, see? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, first met the writer and goes, you are L. You're 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 a girl. Um, he didn't know that the writer of Tex and, and the Outsiders was a female. So his first time meeting him, he said in a New York accent, "He goes, oh wow, I didn't know you were a girl." Oh, okay. To paraphrase, New York City. Yeah, 
Yeah, interesting. Yeah, terrible salsa there. New York City. Yep, this is made salsa. in New York City. So let's talk about the filmography. So the first one that's on... I, I don't get a choice to talk about what movies oh, he'd be yeah. in. <laughs> Sorry, you should have been... Uh, you should have listened to our meetings. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> What's up? We only have selective uh, interactions. Yeah, yeah pretty um, much. I, I, I think... Um, a lot of Val Kilmer stuff he could take. He could have done early on. Uh, he would have been great in mm -hmm. Top Secret. He would have been great in Real Genius instead of Val Kilmer. Willow. Uh no, no. He, Mad Mardigan's a tall, slender hunk of a man. A slender hunk of a man. Yeah, oh. he's very tall, very long man. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's not Tom Cruise. No, uh, and I would. I like don't think that's going to make many romance novels. He was so tall and slender, a hunk slender of a man. man. I'd like to see. Um, <laughs> I would like to have seen Tom Cruise in a uh, Friday the Thirteenth movie. I Ooh. don't care any, which one, but oh, he could have been in a movie like Depp was. Yeah, yeah. Where he well, just or got... like Kevin Bacon was yeah. in the first yeah. Friday the Thirteenth. Like he just got killed off. He could take over uh, Crispin Glover's scene and done that weird <laughs> dance in part four. But that just shows you, I don't think he would have taken on any of those roles mm -hmm. where he just gets killed in the first two scenes or whatever because he was trying to make this big name of himself right, and be right. and look yeah. where that got him. But I'd like to see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. So let's go ahead and see what he has been in and talk about his filmography. Let's talk about his filmography. Yeah. So the goal of this, and we did this uh, for our horrorities or horror comedies, is we went through the films that really uh, piqued our interest in the different uh, years. And we had a well, great... It was really long. And we had a great conversation yeah, it was. About it. Did we have a great conversation? In my head, yes. It was my I'm show, just... so yes. <laughs> I was the, I was the executive pursuit, producer of that Pursuiter. one, so yes. Yes. You are exactly. the executive pursuer. I am. I want to be a pursuer. Anyways, so let's go ahead and focus in on it. So 1981. 1981. In 1981, there was a Not film. a very exciting year. It wasn't. It wasn't. But 1981 did have a film that did feature about seven minutes of Tom Cruise, and that film was called Endless Love. Do Hated it. No, I'm just kidding. I, I haven't seen it. Okay. Two snaps and a surf. <laughs> All right. Adam, did you see Endless Love? I did, but it's been so long I don't even yeah. know. I didn't realize he was in the damn movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, he His uh, his agent, who changed his name to Tom Cruise, got him into His agent role. changed his name to Tom Cruise? Yeah. So there's a Tom Cruise the actor and a Tom Cruise the agent? Yes, there is now. I'm so confused. It's okay. Ugh. Uh, flow charts will come I later. You, I got you. Uh, but no, um, so that started off. And in fact, he was so impressive that that led to other opportunities. Remember, up to this point, he was being denied left and right different uh, auditions. And uh, it was actually pretty uh, uh, sobering when he talks about it, when you see some of his interviews where he talked about getting rejected early on. Um, just because you can see how much that fueled him. Um it's funny when you see interviews with Tom Cruise and he talks about his rejection. It reminds me very similar to when you see pro athletes talking about not being picked up in certain rounds of the NFL draft. It's like I, I got picked up in the sixth round and that really fueled my career. And I think those rejections really did build that and stoke that fire inside of them. <laughs> um, so 1981, Endless Love. Uh, of course, I was focused mostly on Brooke Shields. Of course. <sighs> Anyways. Um, Taps. Oh, 1981. Taps with a, a fantastic ensemble cast with some guy named Sean Penn that no one ever heard of afterwards. Uh, um, Spicoli. Now, did you guys act? <laughs> did you guys see Taps? I did see Taps. That's not. What, what do you think? Do you think I saw Taps? That's why I wasn't looking at you until yeah. I, it's not one of those movies I like, so no? I don't care for. Oh it. man, now Tom Cruise was awesome in this. He he played a nutso. It was great. Huh. Yeah, I I, I strongly recommend Taps it. is do 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 yes, yes. Do, do. they play when people die yeah. yes to okay. remember sounds it. like a great movie <laughs> well, it, well we uh, we all know that you Allison are a huge aficionado of military movies hated oh, it <laughs> absolutely yeah oh yeah. wait till we get to a few good men oh that's oh well enough about your love life sweetie. <laughs> 
Uh, but anyways, Aaron let's... Sorkin can do no wrong. Oh uh, my God. So okay, you know what? I need some new dad jokes. So let's go ahead and take a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now when we fought. You had that eye of the tiger, man, the edge. Hey, everybody. My name is Adam, and I am part of the Cinema Madness podcast. I'm here to tell you about some exciting news. We're making a movie. As I've mentioned on the show numerous times, I am obsessed with the films of 1982, and I want to share my love of those years with all of you. So we are taking a deep dive into 75 movies, all from 1982, to show that this was an important year, or maybe the most important year, in pop culture cinema. Movies like Blade Runner, The Thing, E.T., Poltergeist, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and many, many more. Interviewing cast and crew from these movies, as well as fans and also film experts. We are currently crowdfunding for equipment and logistics while in development. And when we are ready for pre-production, we will get all of you involved too. That means names in the credits, special goodies, perhaps posters and art. So if you are excited as we are about this, and really, why shouldn't you be? Check out the campaign at cinematis.com slash 1982themovie. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 1982themovie. So come along with us, and let's celebrate cinema. If you're looking for a hot podcast, I've got the one for you. The hottest podcast of the year is The Real Housewives of Reality, starring Scarlett and Allison. This podcast has everything. It's girl meets girl, two Bravo-obsessed hosts, a producer named Leon, who knows what love is and is very often screamed at and or abused on the air, allegedly. Weekly recaps of all your favorite housewives, hot gossip, an unadulterated and inexplicable love of Iowa, deals on Mary Kay and BetterHealth.com, relationship advice if you want to stay single forever, and who doesn't? Plus, there's bonus material like the Bravo Booster Pack, which highlights the most iconic Bravo episodes through all the years, and housekeeping with the hottest gossip for you to listen to while you keep your own house, if you do. Hey, tune in. There's so much more. I said what I said. In 1983, he was in this <laughs> film called The Outsiders. Mm-hmm. And uh, another, another one of Allison's favorites. Yeah. I mean, it could be. I do love Greasers. <laughs> so Half of me is a But you that. did not like Streets of Fire. Hey, if you go back and watch hey! our... Hey! <laughs> if you go back and watch our... Batch. If you, you go, go back watch watch and watch our retro rewatch, Adam's retro rewatch, where I was a guest... I didn't say I hated that movie. I will never watch it again, but it was a very strange movie. I do still love Greasers. I just don't love Greasers mixed with... Willem Dafoe? 80s. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. No, Outsiders, I thought, was... Oh, man. There's so many people in this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's... Well, and this was... Daisy was in it, too. Yeah. Ralph Macchio. It was was the Brat Pack. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Mm -hmm. uh, It was... It was fondly known as a Brat Pack, and he actually got to know a lot of the guys in it, and uh, it helped his career. Diane um, Lane, who was like one of my favorites. Yeah, I need to go back and watch this. All right. Sorry, my bad. Well, it's good to know that we do our homework before hey! the show. <laughs> uh, so, feeding into the next movie that's on his filmography. Wait, Luke. wait, wait. Oh, we're doing Losing It. I was going to guess the next movie. Oh, sorry, man. You're too slow. Okay. Uh, hey, Adam. Can you guess what the next movie is? Losing it? Oh my gosh! Yeah, you're correct. It Do you know what year that came out? 1983. Damn it! No, why are you going backwards? Losing no. it was 82. No, <laughs> it, it was listed on his official filmography in 1983. Losing, Losing it, it, 1982. 1982. Then it, the Outsiders. All right, fine. There you go, 1982. Who go cares ahead. About 1982. Is, Seriously, I was going to say the next one was all the right moves. No. No. Jeez. All right. Sorry. It's because I'm so far away from my microphone. All right. It was oh, risky okay. business. See, Ris- that's, that's the line business. with mine. Yeah. Risky business, hey. yeah. Hey. All right, so, uh, but uh, losing it, anything on losing it uh, other than what you've already said? Well, uh, I did. Sex I did comedy. Li- yeah, it's yeah. just it's just a fun, mindless yeah. sex comedy about losing your virginity. Uh, it's like It's like risky virginity. business without the better writing. There's a guy in the movie named Spider. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Spider. 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 He is our hero. Jackie Early. Yeah. Oh, Shelly Long was in it. We love Shelly Long. <laughs> Don't we? I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm driving my mom around and she's reading signs. <laughs> 
Oh, they put a Dunkin' Donuts, sweetheart. Oh, Bob Evans. Remember, we went there oh, that one time. Oh, oh, there used to be a movie theater That's fine. right here. That's fine. It's funny. That's what I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> Shelly Long. We love her. It's funny because I'm, I'm going through Cheers right now. So I'm like, Shelly Long. Go. I'll keep, I'm going to keep doing it. Every movie that I haven't seen, I'm going to look up who was in it, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay let's but I have seen Risky Business. I so, mean, like I said, it's it does not hold up. And why not? Because I haven't seen it for a long time. It's is it the underwear scene? No, no, yeah. no. It, it's it's just it's 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 a movie of its time, and it's just very. I don't know. It's it's not. It doesn't hold your interest anymore. Like it's not oh. the it's not the cool '80s movie that you want it to be. It's it's the cool movie that came out in the '80s that you're like, oh, that's cool. And then it's just not that great. I mean, Rebecca De Mornay's is nude a lot in the right. movie. Even the train scene and yeah. stuff. None of that just, I guess. I mean, that stuff's, I mean, you know, it's, it's they're hot scenes. Right. But like the, the, the comedy falls flat. Bronson Pinchot's yeah. not very good in it. You know, Curtis Armstrong, he plays a stronger role in this movie than he played in any other role that he's ever done. And it was still like the comedy sidekick role. But it's just, it's not... I, I, it was a hard watch for me to go back and watch it again. And I remember liking the movie a lot throughout my life. Yeah. I remember watching it and getting jealous because his whitey tidies were so incredibly white. Uh, I, I don't know how he got them so white. He I got them directly from Walmart out of the bag. It was Woolite. Oh, my heavens. I, I, I have OxyClean. I've, I've scrubbed, Billy Mays scrubbed. here for OxyClean. Ancient Chinese Why did I secret. make Billy Mays sound like he was African American? It's okay. Was he? Did you? <laughs> Billy Mays here for OxyClean. I, that's, I, I, Billy Mays for OxyClean. That's kind of what I said. Oh, boy. Rest in peace, Billy Mays. Uh, <laughs> so the Tom Cruise episode is going to be in. That boy's okay, good. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so... But Risky Business, I mean, everybody knows yeah. that scene, even if you've never seen the movie. Oh, yeah. Okay? Right. It's and parodied like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I how, mean, how look at Zach Morris. Seen... Zach yeah. Morris did it when, mm-hmm. in Saved by the Bell, when Screech's parents went out of town and they had a party. Mm-hmm. 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 And Bob Seger... Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Bob Seger's... Jamaica um, <laughs> um, Oh, my heavens. Bob Seger's song is basically synonymous with that Old scene. Old-time rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. You, can't, you can't really hear that without right. someone... Doing that impression the same way almost that you can't hear the song Tequila with someone not trying to do an impression of Pee Wee Herman. Right. Which they tried to get me to do at trivia last week. Remember my mom's like, do the dance! Do the dance! Like I I'm five re- years old. I don't remember that, but oh, yeah. I would have encouraged that if I had heard it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so <sighs> that was Risky Business. A little uh, insight of my life. Now we're in 1983. Yes. All the right moves. All the right moves. A which, football movie, yeah. which we know Allison loves, too. I like some of them. Football. If it has certain people in it. Let's see who was in this. Because oh, I clearly boy. haven't Remember, seen if it. you pause it at the right time, you can see his penis. Really? That was a line oh. from Scream. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tatum said that. Uh, Leah Thompson. Yes. And you're tuning in to Allison just realizes. <laughs> Allison re- reads IMDb. <laughs> no, I haven't seen all the right moves. In fact, I think all the right mm-hmm. moves came out after Jaws three because I think Leah Thompson's <laughs> first role was Jaws three. Really quick question: His role was Stefan Dijgorjevic. So was he from another country and he came over to play football? No, he was just a dude who played football. Oh, okay. That with, has with, a with, with had a very yeah, Swedish accent. He was accent. a five foot six uh, <laughs> uh, football player. Okay. You know, like 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 uh, not Rudy with Lucas. Lucas. Oh. I thought for the longest time he was in Lucas. Um, I did too. I did Cruz. too. Yeah. Yeah, because when I was looking at his filmography, I'm like, oh, awesome. Because if you guys are fans of the Facebook page. I posted. Um, <laughs> Am I a fan of our Facebook? Page? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I I I help out with the the movies of the day. Um, the help out. You were like these. You you're the social media god of of the Cinemadness Which podcast. Is sad. Oh, I do stuff. Exactly. Well, you're the you. you're the social yeah. media goddess. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, I schedule things. You do, you do, and it's fantastic. But um, I don't do shit for oh, this. Stop for it. our social oh, media. Stop it. Oh, stop it. I thought he was an Empire of the Sun all this time. No, that was Christian Bale. Yeah, yeah, I realize that now. But I feel like what's that thing? The the something effect. 
The Mandela effect? Yeah, yeah. I felt that with Lucas and Legends of the Sun. Because I'm looking and I'm like, oh. The hell is Legends of the Sun? I'm sorry, Empire of the Sun. I was looking <laughs> at Legend. Well, yeah, that's next on the list. But uh, go ahead and finish your bit. That was my <laughs> bit. It's not a bit. Okay, so I have Legend in 1985. That is, I'm still, I, I know I put it as my number one that I didn't like, but it is a very unfortunate movie because the studio. Weird barbecue. The studio messed up that movie. Um, okay, how? I, Let's expand I on that. do not like the, the theatrical cut of the movie. Mm-hmm. It, uh, the um, Ridley Scott cut is a completely different film. Oh, did you hear that? That is why he has a problem with it. Hashtag release Ridley Hashtag Scott. Hashtag Ridley cut. Scott is well, my it's, favorite It's been director. released. Yeah. Yeah. It's been released. Um, it's, it's hard to find. Uh, I think uh, you think it's only available in Europe. The well, um, but the Tim the, Curry was great. In Tim it. Curry was fantastic in it. His makeup was phenomenal. I but, was scared shitless. Yeah. But they, they for they, the longest time they that. they cut the movie so much that it doesn't make any sense. There's there's some really yeah. long parts that that don't connect to the really short parts, and the director's cut puts it all together. It's it's almost it's pushing about three hours. Kind That's of like ridiculous. Of but the music was also changed. I don't know who did the music for Legend, but the original score was done by Tangerine Dream, and it was absolutely beautiful. Mm, sounds yummy. So do you think it was done to maintain a PG uh, rating? That and try to get people in, because the 80s was a big time for fantasy movies. Yes, mm-hmm. never-ending story. Never-ending story. You had... You had um, Labyrinth. Lab- 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 Labyrinth. You had Dark mm-hmm. Crystal. You had Secret of Nim. You had... Excalibur, Dragon Slayer, Secret of Nim, Secret of Nim, 1982. Yep. Same with Dark Crystal. Yep. Okay. So moving. <laughs> Cine on. Madness, season one, episode two, 1982. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, next on the list was some little tiny movie uh, after Legend that no one ever heard of called nah. Top Gun. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we um, talk about that. Speaking of Ridley Scott. <laughs> Exactly. His late brother, Tony, Mm -hmm. directed Top Gun. Yes. Um, It was interesting because, again, this is the film that made aviator, redefine aviator glasses. Like, everyone, (laughs) you know, uh, now when you put on aviator glasses, people tend to do the Tom Cruise kind Mm -hmm. of scene where... The risky business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Again, he, he... Ray Bans should owe that man so much. They should. They should, uh, they should just call him Tom Bans. Uh, they really should, or you know, the cruise model. Um, but uh, it really was awesome in so many ways. Weird when you look back at that film from Top Gun because I've seen the documentaries where um, Ridley Scott's brother uh, Tony Tony Scott. That's right. Uh, where Tony Scott didn't want that um that uh locker room scene no he he wanted it he insisted on it but the the, the tidy whitey scene yeah but, more tidy whiteys with tom cruise well, oh yeah yeah but the uh military uh advisor on the film he lost his shit he goes no fighter fight pilots don't have locker rooms they don't right. talk like this no this is and he basically pulled uh, Tony Scott pulled a Hitchcock, where Hitchcock famously went to um, the actress in Birds because she's like, "Sir, and slapped him." Yeah, sir, I, I don't understand why why I would run through the hallway. And he goes, "The cold eye said so." Um, Tippy Hedren is who he was talking. Tippy. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't, you know, the one girl. Tony yeah. Scott was a badass. So Tony Scott, he he liked. He, I love Tony Scott. Okay, I enjoy Ridley Scott, but Tony Scott was more. Well, so, My cup of tea. So I know we covered Top Gun Draw for. It. I know we Days covered Top. Are we done here? Uh huh. I know. Go ahead. No, that was just me sipping my water. Okay, wall. sorry. I know we covered Tony's, or we covered Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, people! I'm trying so hard to say it. Uh, and you wonder why we give it to you tough when it's your turn to produce it's like how come you guys always do oh this? you think this is tough <laughs> okay i see i'm uh, being nice compared to what you guys do to me top gun was mm-hmm. a f- phenomenal movie when it came out for its time because everything was real yeah the flying was real yeah. uh the, the danger e- yeah it was it was all real mix. nothing nothing was in like like a like mm-hmm. a like a simulator or anything it yeah. was really 
real, real, real. And I think that's where Tom Cruise is like, well, I'm just going to do real stuff from now on. I, I think so, too. I think he wanted to do, he wanted to learn how to pilot the, fi- yeah. the fighter yeah. jets. Well, and he and wanted to do things. That's and, what's, he's always looking to challenge himself, which right. is mm-hmm. very interesting about him. Like, he has a pilot's license. He got it from... Um, John Travolta. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> Ontario. He got his pilot's license in Ontario. He actually lived in Ottawa for a while, which was very I'm sure interesting. sure he has like a gajillion houses. He lives everywhere. In fact, he... Um, he now lives with he, his sister. He made everyone in the new one, Maverick, learn how to fly. Exactly. Yeah, everybody in well, the new movie had to learn... Had to had to learn how to how to fly those. Is jets. that why there's only three people in the cast? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you just know only three people in the cast. And right? a picture of Val Kilmer. Oh, uh, it kills me. He's got to show up. But we're not talking about Maverick. Um, I well, think we're kind of we, talking about. Well, that. yeah. That's why we're doing Tom Cruise is because Maverick's coming up. Me I Maverick. think as I mean I can't speak because I wasn't a young mm-hmm. boy in the early '80s. But when you guys what? saw when the, were you a young boy? <laughs> when I was a young boy. When uh, I was a young one. She was a, she was a uh, young boy in camp, camp sleepaway. No, I oh, was God. not. Ah, oh. man. Anyways, I mean, this camp, movie came out in 1986, boy. so I clearly yes. didn't see it in the theater, obviously. Um, obviously. I obviously, did, actually. I was six. But when you guys saw this movie, I mean, as a little boy, were you just like... I mean, besides like the love story and 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 stuff like that, you you might have uh, you might have you know appreciated the deaths and and the mm-hmm. bond of that. But were you guys just like, holy hell, this is the coolest thing ever! Like, look at him flying this plane. I want to do that. I was pumped. I, right. I would ride. Me and my friends would ride our bikes, and we were pretending we pretending were pretending we were in jets. Yeah. Right. I I wanted to be Goose more than Maverick. To be straight up with you, just because he could play the piano and he was cool, he could of fly. Course. I can see and he's that. Dead. Yeah. But you had to think that that movie was so badass. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, it, every little boy probably wanted to be one of those guys in that a movie. A naval aviator. Exactly. Oh, and another thing about this film, it completely uh, brought love and feeling. Oh, to yeah, 100%. Audience. I mean, it is basically made Hate it when it happens. It made it a standard for when you're drunk, what right. to sing. Right. You know? Yeah. That scene still kind of bothers me. Really? Yeah, I like it, and then I don't like it. Like... I don't know. But it's not really tricking because he's like, yeah, yeah. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you accept me? Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Okay, Kelly let's McGillis. expand on it. Wh- I can't. I can't. I just, I don't know. I mean, as a woman, I guess you would see it differently. Yeah. I can't really expand on that. Well, it's just they kind of made almost a mockery of the song, but they did it in a fun way, like a karaoke version. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just... I appreciate the scene. It's a very, it's a very popular scene. But every time I hear that song, like you said, everybody just wants to, yeah, yeah. get up and sing and make it all crazy, right? Kind of like stupid Sweet Caroline. Is that Pretty a different much. version of Sweet Caroline? What? Or stupid Sweet Caroline? Oh. <laughs> or or Caroline. later uh, in Ten Things I Hate About You? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You're too good to be true. Um, I love yes. you, baby. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, by the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah, I um. <laughs> no, that one's not by the Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So Tom Cruise in Top Gun, and that really made his career, and that really 100%. launched him to a new level. And he said, "Legend be damned." And it had. I'm sorry. I have always had this crush on. Why can't I remember? Val Kilmer. Anthony no. Edwards. Tom Skerritt. <laughs> sorry. From Ridley Scott's Alien. Oh, my heavens. No, no. Sorry. Especially in Top Gun. When you say uh, Tom Skerritt, mm-hmm. I just think, thank you very much to um, um, Ted. Thank you very much, Ted. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. here's a picture of me with Tom Skerritt. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I'm really good friends with Tom Skerritt. I just want to show you this picture of me with Tom Skerritt. Oh, Oh, yeah. Okay. Didn't he actually show up and have a cameo in the film, Tom Skerritt? I think he did near the end. I don't remember, and I I love that movie. He should have. Yeah, that's funny. You're on IMDb. You know they're making a series. What? They're making a TED series. Don't tell people I'm on IMDb. I'm just trying to get used to it. We've already mentioned that. Wait, look. Oh, did you just see what it did? I I opened up Tom I opened up Top Gun and I clicked on something and it said how would you rate Top Gun and instead of just five stars it gave me the option 
15 stars. <laughs> that, like, that's the intensity. Really? Of Tom <laughs> right? That's Tom Cruise. Only Tom Cruise movies get all, those. Yeah, all Tom hey, Cruise. Tom hey Cruise guys. is like, hey, I'm IMDb, make it 15. I, yeah. get, I get 10 more stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that closes a book essentially on t- Top Gun. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say the 80s. I was no, going to say, no, it doesn't. No, it does, no, it no, it does no, it not. Does not. We, we haven't We even... haven't gotten to his Oscar winnings yet. Nope. And we won't. Yeah. He didn't win for Rain Man? No. no. He was nominated. Oh. He's been nominated three times. Tom Cruise has never won. Oh. Nope. Cool. Yeah. Like one of my actually favorite uh, lines from Jack and Jill, the the Adam Sandler film, where they you have... You have a favorite line from Jack and <laughs> Jill? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's where Al Pacino is trying the to... The Dunkachino? Woo- yeah, yeah. Dunka, Dunka, Dunkachino. No. Was Jack and Jill the one where he played yep. his ugly ass sister? Yep. You watched that movie enough to have a favorite line? Yep. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, Al Pacino, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> no apologies. So, anyways, so Al Pacino is wooing Jill and she breaks his Oscar and he goes, That's okay. You have another one, right? And he goes, You would think so, right? Yeah. Yeah, so all that for that that's build up funny. right there, oh, that payoff funny. was not worth it. But anyway, all I know about Jack and Jill, I've seen on like YouTube videos of why it's such a terrible yeah, movie. I've never seen the movie. Uh, I thought you were mispronouncing "fun" with Dick and Jane. <laughs> no, not this time. No, uh, guys, no. Guys, Hi. All right. So next is "Color Purple" with Paul. No. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Color money. <laughs> Color money. <laughs> Oh, uh, fun. So the color mo- money. <laughs> oh, please keep that. Please don't edit that. Oh, uh, Steven Spielberg's The Color Purple, starring <laughs> Tom Cruise as Whoopi Goldberg. As Whoopi Goldberg. Hey, he, that's that's when he started his friendship with Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> so the color money with Paul Newman. Yeah, we the directed it. Yep. The Color Purple was a weird, weird sequel to The Hustler. <laughs> it was the 80s. So people did cocaine. Was this the sequel to The Hustler? Yes, yes. it was. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe I should have watched The Hustler before I saw it. No one I ever did. I just thought it was something about pool. It's, it's just like the movie Maverick uh, in 1993 is a sequel, which no one knows about. There you go. The sequel to what? Well, TV show that stars James Gardner as Maverick. Oh, yeah, yeah, Maverick. yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brett Maverick, not uh, yeah, not airplane Maverick. Air- <laughs> exactly. But uh, color money. Uh, so color money is. Uh, I feel that it's it's, uh, it's a forgotten film. I, I it wasn't really one of his major films. It was kind of like, eh. but it was it was very it was very critically acclaimed. Like th- whenever it was brought up in the time it was released. Mm-hmm. Uh, Everybody who was into movies were like, "Oh yeah, the color, the color of money is, it's 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 a tour de force for Tom Cruise because it was like a real dramatic role for him." Yeah, mm. with Paul Newman. With Paul Newman mm-hmm. and his salad mm-hmm. dressing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, that was a Scorsese movie. Yes. What's funny is Paul Newman, of course, is a, um, a political advocate uh, in some ways. And he became to be good friends with Tom Cruise and basically changed his perspective. So Tom Cruise, you remember, was in Top Gun and that really glorified the military. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, after speaking with uh, Paul Newman and really getting educated in his perspective, Tom Cruise decided to take on a film to kind of almost counteract that, Mm -hmm. which is born on the 4th of July mm-hmm. because he wanted to tell the other side of the oh, military okay. so that not glorify sense. it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a very interesting tidbit when researching this episode. <clears throat> and, and they were like, hey, Some people he was, do research. He was like, hey, I should get this role because uh, I was almost born on the 4th of July. I was born on the 3rd of July. On the 3rd, but that doesn't sound as cool, so give me the movie. I, I just want to paraphrase. That's what he just, sounds like. Uh, <laughs> I'm Tom Cruise. Give me that movie. <laughs> I was thinking of Jason Mraz, uh, you know, because you were born on the 4th of July, Freedom Rings, somebody on the surface. Nope. Something nope. on the surface. Nope. Kind of makes me. Nope. Anyways, Only you know, know one Jason Mraz song, and it's not that. Color purple. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. There you go. Okay. All so right. Color Here we money. come. Here we come. All right. And it comes to Ugh. Cocktail. Yay. Which um, now. Uh, 
Addicted to Love is what always sticks in my mind when he sings in his charming Tom Cruise uh, voice. Addicted to Love. Yeah, he, he just goes on this weird falsetto and he does it again later on when he's playing uh, Jerry Maguire when he's singing um, uh, Free Fallen with that charming singing voice. And he even does it when he's singing Lil Deuce Coop in uh, War of the Worlds. Boy, this is really taking us to a, a very interesting angle, guys. Oh, I tell I you what. That. No, you don't? I wow. Don't know. It's good to know I'm stuck with cinephiles Little here. Lil Deuce Coop. Hey, yeah, yeah we're I'm talking kidding. about cocktail. We're talking about cocktail. All right, so go ahead, Allison. Go ahead and, and take take over the conversation. Go I'm ahead. upset that this only got 5.9 out of 10. It's not that a high? very good movie. Why, that though? I know it got a Razzie, but why uh, is it not a good movie? Why do I like it so much? I, I think I, it's because this is Elizabeth Shue. I love it, too. It's just, it's, it's that, it's that, it just has that 80s free feel to it yeah it's got that 80s vibe where you know guy goes somewhere guy falls in love with a girl they get in a fight well they have this long you know romantic vacation Mm -hmm. and then they get back to the real world and then they break up and then they get back and then you know it ends happily ever after but i don't know it's just I just like it. It's good. And he's so good in this movie. He is. And so is the other guy. What makes him so good? Brian Brown. Yeah. I'm not going to let you off the hook. What what makes him so good? Well, one, he's super hot in this movie, and she's super hot. So it's like perfect together, right? He's just so likable. Yeah, He's kind of a bad boy. Like, who doesn't want to date the bartender that has all these tricks that all the other girls want, but he only has eyes for you? And he and wants he, to open up his own bar. And he started out as such a doofus, right? And he grew. You, we got to, we got to grow with him. Yeah, it's, it's almost like you're spending your entire life with this person, or his entire life. No wonder Allison likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're you're just rooting for him the whole time. Yeah, yeah. All right. And a funny thing, uh, the the Thor: Love and Thunder trailer came out a couple weeks ago. Yes. Uh, and one, and I was watching a video on Easter eggs. There's a cocktail Easter egg in mm-hmm. Thor: Love and Thunder. There's one scene where he's flying away from from New Asgard on mm-hmm. on Earth on his this flying long ship, and there's a quick shot of the cabin, and inside the cabin has the cocktails and drinks sign from cocktails cocktail and, and dreams. Yeah, that's it. Cocktails and dreams. Nice. So Thor has that sign. You're not going to get any ball busting from me. I have color of money, or color. Of pro- now I say it correctly. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> Anyways, you get the point. So, cocktail. Uh, Rain Man came out in '88. Definitely, definitely Rain Man. Definitely came out in '88. Definitely. Now, he was nominated for his first Academy Award with Rain Man, which is very interesting, and he didn't win. But uh, but didn't the movie win? Well, I know Hoffman won, right? Yeah, Hoff- I don't know if I I, I Hoffman, have to I don't think I'll look won. it up. I know Rain Man was up uh, up for Best Picture. Oh, I'm sure it was. I'm sure he was directed mm-hmm. for, or the director Barry Levinson was up, but mm-hmm. um, it, it was- won. It won four Oscars. It won Best Picture, Best Actor in a Leading Role, Dustin Hoffman, Best Director, and Best Writer. Boy, Tom Cruise, you suck. <laughs> Pretty much. He it's like everybody else hard, wins. He yeah. probably had some good people. Uh, you know, He was good in the movie. Obviously, oh, no, he, Dustin he, Hoffman he, deserved he, it. He was awesome. I, I like the remake called Sin of a Woman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I like Rain Man. I don't love it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's worth all the praise that it got. Okay, let's expand yeah, on why? it. I just, why? I don't know. I just don't... I don't think it's that great of a movie Mm. i think it's 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 just like it's just like in um what was the ben stiller movie was it tropic thunder where he he was oh where you can't go for yeah it's 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 that it's oscar bait i was quoting a film yeah i know it's it's oscar bait and mm-hmm. yeah, it was basically the one that started Oscar bait. For but that. are you thinking that now? Because that's now all because we all think about that now. Right. But, but but at the time you weren't thinking that I kind of not not. I wasn't thinking, no, it's not Oscar bait. No, right. Not at nine years old. Well, but I was thinking, you know, it almost feels like even at that, you know, at that t- time in my life, I was like, it seems kind of pandering towards this is this is what's supposed to win an Academy Award. Mm-hmm. And. I just didn't. I I, I don't know. It, there was something about it, and it also had Ramada from Hot Shots in it, and she was hot in it. Was that Tom Cruise's yes. girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, she was really good in that movie mm-hmm. because 
she stuck up for him. She, yes. she spoke her mind with Tom Cruise and basically telling him, you're an asshole to your brother. I mean, I, if you look back on that movie, yes, Dustin Hoffman was good. But I can see where you're saying, did you guys just give him the award because he was good at playing a handicapped person like you did Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump and yeah. da, da, da. But if you look at, at Tom Cruise, the the length that he grew that character in that movie is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, he was an ass. He yeah. didn't even know he had a brother. And then he just got his brother dumped in his lap and he was a jerk to him. And then he used him to get money. Danny and then he, did the same thing in Twins. No one ever uh, praises his yeah, I mean, Rain Man wrong. was much better than the than the sl- sequel slash remake they did with Fred Savage, but um, you know, the Wizard. Oh, the Wizard. Oh, it's the exact same movie. It's the exact movie. Mm, kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay. They even exploit the kid for his talents. They do, but Fred Savage wasn't mean to the brother. It was, was at first. Yeah, it, that was like Nickelodeon's version. Of yeah, the, it was yeah. a kid's version. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, I just remember the video games in Wizard. I'm thinking that's oh, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It was just a big Nintendo <laughs> commercial. Yeah, I, yeah, it was jazz. Me and my bro were jazz, and it made the Power Glove look cool, like Freddy Krueger did. Yes, <laughs> and uh, Freddy's dead. I think the story was just kind of touching at times. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I, I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I'm just saying it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. It's as good as uh, people say it is anymore. Oh. Well, Allison hit the nail right on the head where it's about the 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 character arc. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. In that's... terms of the journey and And that's why it should that's why it won Best Writer. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's what makes it stand out because it, it's about essentially a human condition in mm-hmm. terms of how we define humanity and how we define normal. I'm curious you to know. know who he lost to, so you go ahead to the next thing and I'm gonna look that up because you go now, to that, your I'm, thing. now okay. that I'm talking about how good he was, I'm Curious well, I'm just going to gush over Born on the 4th of July, which is 1989. Born on the 4th of well, July, well, I was born. No. Thank you, Tom Cruise, Addicted to Love. That's That was that was Born, that was on, the, Bruce that was yes, born on the 4th of July from The Color Purple, the musical. Of course. <laughs> Where Tom which Cruise actually plays exists. Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, so, Born on the 4th of July is... To me, just such a strong film, and the fact that Tom Cruise did not win Best Actor for that film is shocking because he, again, you can see the patriotism that he has at the very beginning of the film. His his character, the actual real person that he's portraying, he does a wonderful job. Um, and then you can see how he becomes very bitter, but then he takes that bitterness and makes it a positive. And... Uh, that whole story itself was sad, but it, it has an interesting redemption at the end. And that is what made me respect him at an early age because I tuned into that m- movie when I was eight years old in 1990, expecting Maverick. Mm. Um, you know, expecting Maverick. And, and I started asking questions that. You know, maybe eight year olds shouldn't be asking. Um, I started digesting ideas that really were very important and, and still important to this day. And I still think this film, unlike some of the other ones that we mentioned, stands up so well. Um, it, it's a beautiful piece, it's a beautiful, well done. Uh, the scene where, where you show him, his character at the very beginning of the film where he's a bag boy at the grocery store and he seeks out the girl right before he reports uh, to uh, boot camp. You know, it's very touching to this day and the innocence is still there. Allison, how's your search going? It's, it's hard because I'm typing in the 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 year of the movie, and I think I'm supposed to be typing the year of the Oscars because you know sometimes they oh, vary. It's so. the next year, yeah. Come come back to me. Come okay, me well, so that's probably going to be part of our trivia because now we're on trivia. So some interesting uh, factoids about. Oh, are we done with the '80s? Yes, we are. Okay. That's '89. Yeah, so we're going. Put '89 a stamp. is usually at the end of the '80s. Yeah, yeah, usually. That's uh, seven after 1982. That's right. Yeah. And in 1982 was one of the greatest years for pop culture cinema. If you say so. 96 was pretty good. 2008 was pretty good. Just saying. 
just saying. <sighs> Anyways, so some fun trivia. Uh, lost out to actor Peter Barton for the lead role in Tom Cruise trivia, by the way, in 19 in the 80s. Uh, so Tom Cruise actually lost out to actor Peter Barton in the lead role in the television show The Powers of Matthew Starr in 1982. Oh my God, The Powers of Matthew Starr. Yes. That show was awful. It was at I and love he it. did not make it on that show. That's how awful it was. I've never heard of that. Yes. There you go. It was and, a it was a sci-fi superhero story. It was yeah, no. A couple other fun factoids and this is uh basically roles that he uh was offered or had a chance to. He was offered the lead role in Footloose in 1984 but turned it down in order to star in All the Right Moves. All the Right Moves? Moves, yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so it's going to be the name of my autobiography. All the right moves. All the right moves. Yeah, there you go. Uh, additionally, went on to audition for the role of Howard Keish in Harry and Son in 1984. He didn't get that role, but the director, Paul Newman, remembered him and decided that he wanted Cruz for The Color of Money. Ah. Yes. You will never forget the name of that movie now. No, I... It, uh, anyways, I found my answer. Go ahead, talk to me. He wasn't even nominated. I thought he was. No, because it shows it shows the actor in the leading role winner Dustin Hoffman, and then it says actor in a supporting role, Kevin Klein, A Fish Called Wanda, mm-hmm. Martin Landau, Tucker, The Man in His Dream, River Phoenix, Running on Empty, Dean oh, Stockwell, geez. Married to the Mob, and Alec Guinness. Kevin Klein won. He wasn't even nominated. Well, wouldn't he still? Wouldn't he be a lead actor? Well, he wasn't nominated against Dustin Hoffman. Oh, okay. He, no, it was big. Tom H- Dustin Hoffman beat Tom Hanks, Gene Hackman, Edward James Almos, and Max von Sydow. Sydow. Was, uh, that's Gene, a lot of was people. Gene Hackman, James, the package? James Almost Mississippi was, Burning. Oh, okay, Missy, yeah. Because I'm assuming that... Stand and deliver. Yeah, yeah. Those are some tough competitors oh, right there. Oh, geez. Huh. Edward James huh. Almost should huh. have had a mental illness. <laughs> that, that's where he went wrong. <laughs> how, how can I break through to these kids? Definitely Judge Wapner. Uh, so for um, in 1988, he became the first actor, Tom Cruise, uh, with the distinction of starring in both the year's Oscar winner for Best Picture, Rain Man, and the year's Razzie winner for Worst Picture, Cocktail. cocktail. Yeah. Womp, womp. Yeah, and that's con- well, that concludes my uh, my trivia Wait, in the eighties. Don't we 80s. have taglines? I was feeding into my that. My bad. Yeah, but before we go, let's go ahead and get some taglines. Hold on, I only got a couple okay, for each that, that's each fine. thingy. Okay, um, cocktail. These are dumb, right? You want me to tell you what the what they are, right? These aren't the ones we're making up. No, no. Okay. When he pours, he reigns, as in R E I G N S. Oh boy! Oof! Reigns with murder. And then, <laughs> and then they only have two. And then they thought he was good. They were wrong. He was the best. Ooh. Okay. He's I, the best around. around. See? Yeah. What? Okay. So I don't watch. I don't Karate watch Kid. Karate Kid or Cobra Kai, but I know, I know how to. Yeah, age there you into go. You, you just chopped right just, into that. Yeah, yeah. You, uh. you, you went all crane on us. Now Ooh. I have you just went kidding. crane. I'm kidding. Crane. No, uh, no. here's no guys. No, you didn't like my walking, so no, I'm going walking out of you. I have, ah, I yeah. have more. Ah. Those are bad. Well, or alternative for a cocktail, oh, yes, cocktail. service with a style. Oh, yeah, there you go. Except for those awful jail costume, jail shirts they <laughs> the wore prison. in the prison. Yeah, the prison. Was it the prison block? Yeah, so- cell block. Cell block. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Those were horrible. There you go. Oh, what else God. you got for us, Allison? Top Gun taglines. Ooh. Wait, did Mike, your husband, give you uh, all of these? No. <laughs> these Off the from, top of his head. These are my MDB. <laughs> that would just be like, uh, the best movie ever. Oh. Um. One of them just says from the producers of Beverly Hills Cop and Flashdance. Wow, they really dug deep on that one. Yeah, um, it's a solo mission. Yeah, and I'm going with him. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Up there with the best of the best. 
Someone At got least that it. makes sense. Yeah. And then the number one, number one tagline is the number one line in the movie. Give it to me. You guys know what it is. Go. There's no you room for second cool. place. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? What did you say? You could be my co pilot. No, I feel the need, the need oh. for speed. Oh, Shame. Oh, yeah. oh. Man, we were really overthinking we that. Oh, man. Yeah. I feel the need, the need for, for murder. <laughs> Uh, All of these could be used for Scream. Yes. Okay, and this is my from favorite. From the producers. I mean, <laughs> from the producers of okay. Murder. And then we're going back to his first one, Endless Love. And, and the one, I'm not going to read all of these because there's a lot, but the first mm-hmm. one just made me laugh. And once I say it, you might understand why I think it's funny. And I might have to sing it. Sorry. This is, I'm like, this is a big, uh, this to is do. A big, yeah, this is a big. She is 15, he is 17. The love every parent fears. So you know how I hear uh, that. She's 15. She is 15. He is 17. The love every parent fears. <laughs> Come see endless love. Da, 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 the greatest love story of all. With murder. So he was 17. She was 15. That's a horrible. Can we pause? <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid. Has a horrible tagline. Okay. She's 15 and he is 17. The love every parent fears. This summer. Endless love. That sounds like a horror movie. It sa- no, it sounds, sounds like fear. Like, it sounds like statutory rape. Come promote statutory rape just like Blue Lagoon <laughs> with the same bitch. All she does <laughs> is well, she, hoe around on the beach. She, she was also in Pretty Baby uh, where she was literally a, a, a underage prostitute. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, wasn't, she are- also in, wasn't she also Alice Sweet Alice? I was she? Know. Brooke Shields? Wasn't that her first role was in Alice Sweet Alice? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, uh. I could look it up, but I'm done. Good. So yeah. those are the taglines I have. You done good. Okay, the well, the taglines I have don't exist. Well, that's You can make okay. up taglines. That's yeah. right. Make one okay. up for legend. Legend. Fantasy, unicorns, <laughs> and darkness. <laughs> Okay, all right. I feel it. I feel it. You thought I was going to say murder, didn't you? I did. I did. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. We'll give you two more. I want you to have a tagline for Rain Man. He didn't know he had a brother. And in the end, neither did he. Neither did who? The brother? Yeah. I know. Mm. It sounds about as right as she's 15, he is 17. Yeah. How about... He didn't know he had a brother, and the brother needed underwear. <laughs> Kmart sucks. The Aww. kind of brother you can count on. Oh. oh. There you go. You're welcome, people. Charlie Babbitt. Yes. Rhymes with rabbit. <laughs> I like how you said it like a robot, though. Charlie <laughs> Babbitt. All, all right. So last, last one. Like uh, I am... Worshipping Charlie <laughs> Abbott. The great Adam Cini. Go ahead. Uh, so the last one that I have for you, great Adam Cini, is risky business. Please. Oh, well, my tagline my tagline wouldn't be put on, you know, posters. Because sometimes you just got to say, fuck it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, because that's else? the tagline of the movie. Okay. Was... I got one. Keeping it brief. Oh, you're on a roll. Bam. I don't have one. Oh. Um, I had one for the, the color of money. What? Uh-huh. What's the color of money? The tagline is, not the color purple. <laughs> the color of money is not purple. It's uh, green. Right. Not from Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so, Allison, where yes. can we find our social media stuff? Okay, our uh, website is cinematispodcast.com. dot uh, com. It's back and running. It was on hiatus, but it's it's up. Still got some uh, still hiccups got some, in it. Yeah, but it's there. Uh, Facebook was it taken over by nineteen eighty one? Find out. Nineteen eighty one. That face- bastard year. Fa- <laughs> Facebook is Cinemanus Podcast. I think that's the same for Instagram and mm. what's that other thing? Twitter, Twitter, which I never use. Cinemadness Cinemadness P. P. Yeah, exactly. But just keep listening to us on all the platforms. Thank and you. leave us a review if you want to. That would be fun to we're read We're also now on, we just found out, we're also on Amazon and Audible. Yeah, yeah, so if you're on Amazon and Audible, leave us a review. Tell us, you know, 
if we're okay, if we suck, if you hate us, if you hate Roman. Well, <laughs> I know at least three women that hate Roman. <laughs> uh, Roman's our popular character. 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 <laughs> He's our popular host. Tell us what you would like us to do uh, a well, yeah. theme on. We're going to start doing more Zoom reviews with mm-hmm. our other contributors and oh. doing more stuff. So, yeah. you know. So. We're, we're getting in full swing, but uh, that concludes our 80s version. Go ahead and tune into the rest of the episodes where we talk about Tom Cruise in the 90s, and we'll also talk about Tom Cruise in the 21st century. Ooh. It's going to be rather riveting and very exciting. So please uh, tune in for more uh, Tom Cruise action, Tom Cruise time, and Tom Cruise channel here at Cinematics Podcast. Allison, go ahead and send us out. Highway to the danger zone. Overload. You never know what you can do. What you can get out of the times you can get.